Battle Daily, where we feel guilty that the first PUP designation of the year gave me a little jolt. I'm uh, Greg Rosenthal, and beyond lucky today to have a house full of stars, Patrick Claybon, Steve Weish, and for the first time, Colleen Wolf. I'm back. Wolfie, Wolfie yeah. in the What's house. Up, guys? Hey. Oh my gosh, I uh, haven't been in this studio for like two months, I think. It was the end of May, so now uh, a little over, I guess, like, what, a month and a half or so? It was and May 23rd. I will remember that got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm back, and many things have changed, and it's great to see all of your faces in this new chapter, but I'm excited to see what NFL Daily is going to be. I know it's going to be great, and Greg, I'm excited to still be working together. I mm -hmm. think that that's exciting, and... White, I haven't seen you in it feels like forever, like and yeah. Patrick well, too. And Patrick, I mean, gosh, this is great. It's it it is it's different <laughs> to not be here all the time, guys. Mm. Unplugging the and then plugging back in. <laughs> well, you're struggling a little bit. Let's be honest. You've spent the last you know 15 minutes trying to figure out the internet. Okay, it's a up. work computer, and as it turns out, when you haven't been physically at work for a minute. Things just, you know, aren't working as they normally do. So I have no internet. That's fine. We're just going to ride it out. As long as the key fob works to get you in the building. I was worried about that. I was like, oh, my God, where's my pass? I don't even know where that is. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's been a transition, but we are we are here. We're in the Chris Wesling podcast studio. Mm -hmm. it means something to me. We had we had Nick Wesling on yesterday. I heard. Uh, check, check that out. And uh, yeah, it means a lot to me. You're going to be part of the show. We, we got you weekly yep. mo moving forward and uh -huh. in the season. I'm excited about what you're going to do then. And in the meantime, we'll talk football. And you have a new jacket. I do. I really like this one. <laughs> I just, I did. Um, <laughs> thank you. They all kind of look alike, but didn't have this color didn't at all. Didn't have this color. And I did, yeah, I did get on Emika just like, can you help me? I just feel like I need, it's a new season. We need, we need some things. She's got a great eye, Emika. Like this is, you're going to get a lot of use out of this. It's a versatile color. I'm excited for you, the show and the jacket. I am also excited for today's show because we're debuting a new segment. Every segment's new at this point. Yeah. Judge Connie. I don't <laughs> oh know why, uh, but just. Oh boy, Patrick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Colleen uh -oh. just feels like a person that should be in charge of. Facts. Telling us. Courtrooms. What's the truth? What's not? And uh -huh. Judge, judging people. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we're going to, we're going to argue. In my natural state. <laughs> we're going to argue some NFL topics. Some, okay. Some opinions. And um, we'll have two different sides and, and Connie will decide who's right. Who's wrong? And maybe dole out some punishment. We haven't really set parameters, but we will find out. Okay. Too. But it's not guilty or, or, or guilty, you know. Right. At least we're there. No, we're not. We're not going anywhere. We can. We're. This is more of like a civil suit. No. Not like. <laughs> I mean, I part. can be guilty. I'll, I'll be guilty. <laughs> Sentence me. The only place you're coming is is right back here, pretty often throughout the course of the season. But we've got some news before we get to that. Thank you to Brandon Ayuk for giving us a little news today. A fax machine? <laughs> None of it really makes sense. No, that's the internet. You oh, you, you dial up, dial up, Little dial up. Right. Just me. Right. Laugh. <laughs> Brandon Ayuk. Here's the judge. Wait, wait, real quick. Yes. That exact sound. I one time. This is a, a honestly. This happened. I called my parents' house, and instead of them picking up, that noise picked up, and I was like, Dad, what are you doing at the house? He has all sorts of like fax machines and dial-ups and things happening there. So if that ever happens, you might be calling the wolves. Wait, what year was it? It was like last year. <laughs> it, I, know, I know what that is. Awesome. He, he plugged the fax machine into his regular phone. The fact that he even has a regular phone, but yeah, he, he unplugs the phone, puts yeah. the fax machine in there, that answers it. That's very, <laughs> it's very um, old school. It and is. uh Okay. Not as old school trade requests, but I, I like them. I like when it happens in the NBA they, they, they have podcasts around them for months. Uh -huh. Like that's it, it floats their whole industry. And then the trades actually happen. Doesn't always happen in the NFL. But Brandon Ayuk did request a trade on Tuesday. Uh, NFL Network insider Mike Garofolo. I believe he had this first report. Yeah, it's scoopage. Isn't right? he on vacation? Well, he got this one. He got a, he got a phone call. Look at him. Mike nice G. job by uh, Mike G. Uh, who we hope to have on here a as well throughout the course of the season. We do have an insider later in the week. Ian Rapport joining us. Ayuk's request came after an offseason filled with unsuccessful attempts uh, to reach an extension 
with the 49ers. Uh, Mike reported that they have been unwilling to negotiate uh, since May, the 49ers. Mm. No negotiations here. I'll start with you, Steve. How realistic is this for Ayuk to actually get dealt? I don't think it'll happen. You know, the Niners have already come out and said they have no intention of doing that. But I remember covering the Falcons and Bobby Petrino had no intention of going to coach University of Arkansas. And then the next <laughs> day he took the job. So if somebody sweetens the pot enough, I mean, I think they consider it. But uh, here's why I don't think it happens is because that is Brock Purdy's guy. I mean, you look at their numbers since Brock Purdy has started. Brandon Ayuk is the guy. When you talk to people who cover the Niners, Ayuk is the route runner. Debo's the chess piece. Kettle is... Kittle is the dual threat, as is Christian McCaffrey. But Ayuk is the guy who guys have to really cover and set things up. So I don't think it happens. But, you know, when I look at some of the teams, too, uh, who could possibly be interested, you know, he's going to want to go to Washington. And th- that's not going to happen. They're not going to trade him. When was the last conference. time we heard that about an NFL player? It is a new era there that oh, people wow, want to yeah. go to Washington. Yeah, My well, God. that is absolutely a new era. <laughs> but, I mean, the quarterback there, too, uh, Jaden Daniels, of course, they, they played together at Arizona State. But, I mean, you see teams like the Steelers, you know, the Colts, the Raiders, Denver. Look, if they trade him, it might be to Siberia. And, yep. I'm, and, I, and I'm watching the receiver series. I'm seeing Devontae Adams at the Raiders, like, get me out of here. Let, let's actually listen to Ayuk. This was a sound we played on the first show that you were on, Weish, when we talked with Shook. But I think it's germane to the conversation here. This was Ayuk on the Pivot podcast talking about where he could possibly go this offseason, what uniform he expects to wear. If I were to take a guess, probably probably a Niner uniform. Probably a Niner uniform. I mean, if not a Niner uniform, probably a Washington Commander u- uniform. Oh. If not a Washington Commander uniform, probably a Steelers uniform. Oh. From oh. your lips to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ryan Clark. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're excited. It's, Pretty notable that he just threw those names in there. That was not by mistake. Well, and, and I think in that, and you can hear it, is the the building frustration where there is this uncertainty from the standpoint of he knows that the 49ers don't want to make him the deal that he would like. And so then it's, well, these are the teams that might do that, but he's kind of resigned in the fact that his control over this is is pretty limited. And all you can do at this point is officially request a tweet, which like, shout out to Mike, shout out to the guys. I, I always wonder, like, does it come on papyrus or, at a certain point? <laughs> when it's like, what's the difference between <laughs> requesting a trade and officially doing it? But it, it, it does take it up to the level of, okay, I don't want to be here anymore. Right. And you mentioned maybe they trade him to Siberia. I mean, the Patriots there it would is. actually be a, <laughs> there it a is. viable option there. They have the money there would be obviously the opportunities with the wide receivers that they have there. Now he could be the guy. We don't know about Drake may or anything like that, but there would be balls going his way. And then also you just think about that. The Niners, they, this is their window right now. This is their super bowl window. Why would they trade him away? Because he would be a pivotal part of them winning that super bowl. So I don't know what, Brandon Ayuk, what type of leverage he has in this situation because holding out, like, that's not going to help him financially. No, it'll cost him a good find. Exactly. And it just, it doesn't really behoove him to do so because of where he is just in, in this whole situation. I think, like, it's so expensive and they can tag him in year six, too. Oof. So, yep. and... The 49ers, like, I I guess, yeah, if they get an incredible offer, like they're saying that they have no intention, which, yeah, I mean, that there that leaves some wiggle room in and of itself. But I just can't see them doing that because what is the point for them? The the draft picks are the same in February as they are now. So why would you miss out on that year of Brandon Ayuk? There, There is no reason. Like if the Steelers are serious about it and there's been reporting around the Steelers like they're going to add someone. They're, watch. I know that red receiver depth chart doesn't look good, but they're definitely adding someone. It's like, where are these receivers coming from? And if you and if you really mean it, look at what Tyreek Hill got in terms of a trade. Not only did, did he got to the top of the market, which if you're going to trade for Ayuk, you, you got to put him close to it. He doesn't need to be Jefferson, but he needs to be somewhere. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Right. He and needs to be not, yeah. close. But you also got to give up a first, yep. a second, maybe some more. If you want to be that serious about it, yeah, maybe you would get the 49ers to listen but I even think it, it would have to be such an overpay because of what I said about them trying to win the Super Bowl this year. And they can still get those draft picks for Brandon Ayuk or more likely Debo Samuel. 
in February. And again, there is no draft between now and February. They are in this window of trying to win. It's kind of like the Bengals with T Higgins. Like they know they can't keep all these guys together, but they have them this year. I did reach out uh, about this and asked around. I think a Holden is going to be his move, which we've seen ah. sure, that he shows up, but maybe that. doesn't do anything. I think they'd be fine with that. Like whatever gets him to week one, not, Incredibly unhappy. There's I guess Nick Bosa was considered a hold in last year. Right. Correct. correct. That's a good yeah. call. Rick Bosa has done this as yeah. well. The Niners, the Niners have gotten several of these contracts done in training camp. Be it Bosa, they got Debo. I think the day before camp started, mm-hmm. I think Kittle was right around there as well. So this is kind of how they operate. But the, I thought what was interesting was that Mike said there have been no negotiations since mm. May. May. I that's woo. I mean the Niners, you know, historically have not necessarily done business like that. They've been on the up and up. So maybe that, they that don't like weird. all these podcast appearances, whatever, because that sounds like getting in your feelings. They should be getting this deal done and to have no conversations. There was a report. It was from Diana Rossini of The Athletic that it was in the $26, $27 million range. Who knows? They can fudge those numbers, too, in terms of how it's presented, whether that's new money, whether that's tacked on. We don't know fully. Yeah, Justina Anderson reported, yeah, the Patriots uh-huh. did make an offer or, or reached out a couple weeks ago and that where they were just shut down. I, I just don't see it. Like, it's the number one offense in the league. I I think they know exactly where their window is. And Debo Samuel, to me, is a lot more likely to get traded. I just love Brandon this time a. of year, too, because you get all of these stories right before camp. And literally five days ago, there was a story that George Kittle was certain, very confident that the Niners would come to an extension <laughs> with Brandon Ayuk. Kyle Juszczyk said it as well. <laughs> Yeah. Kyle Juszczyk had to take a, a pay cut. Yes. They, they definitely won't ask Ayuk to do that, but he is making $14 million this year, which is you know, very underpaid for the level that he is at. The receiver market has exploded. Uh, something we'll be watching, but yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath for a trade, even though it's disappointing. I want to be more like the NBA, but yeah, Debo held out, like gold held out, and mm-hmm. they, they got their deals in the end. Let's take a, a quick break, actually, because I'm so excited. I want to get to this segment and leave as much time as possible to enter the court. A recess, if you will. Colleen Wolf's courtroom <laughs> after that. Everyone is talking about the honorable Colleen Wolf, <laughs> the go-to voice for everything football. Real cases, real solutions. Uh, no. She's Judge <laughs> Connie. <laughs> All rise for the Honorable Judge Colleen Wolf, a.k.a. Connie Fox, a.k.a. the Tiny Box. This court with the Honorable Judge Colleen Wolf, a.k.a. Connie Fox, a.k.a. the Tiny Box, <laughs> presiding is now in session. Please be seated and come to order. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Justice Wolf. <laughs> It is a pleasure to be here with all of you in my courtroom. Uh, If counsel could please introduce themselves. Uh, Yeah, I am uh, Greg Rosenthal. I spent years at Tulane Law. Nice to meet you, Judge. Uh, Patrick Claibon. I attended uh, Troy University. I do not have a formal law degree, but I've elected to represent myself. All right, I am Esquire Steve White from the law firm of White and formerly Palmer. Mm. Um, And I will be stating my cases today to prove my clients mm. worthy of your proper ruling. Okay. Counsel, nice to see you all today. I expect everyone to respect my courtroom, respect each other, and of course, follow the letter of the law in these proceedings. All right. So with that, let's get started. Uh, Mr. Rosenthal, would you like to take the floor here? Yes, I will be making an argument that I believe is irrefutable today. And that is the argument that the Chiefs will not make the Super Bowl this year. Um, Just look at history. The last time a team won back-to-back Super Bowls, Tom Brady. One of the greatest ever. Year after that, 10-6, and plus 41-point differential. The worst that he would have for the entire rest of their career. Cowboys, when they were our back-to-back champions, next year after that, 10-6, and point differential, fell. The 49ers came the closest uh, way back in the day. Uh, They got to the NFC Championship game. They, they lost it in the fourth quarter to a good Giants team, but that, that's the point. It is so hard to repeat. It is a single elimination league. I don't care how good you are. 
just to even reach the Super Bowl is an incredible achievement in any one given season and is made that much harder because of human nature. Human nature has not changed in the history of humanity. And human nature tells us week after week, they are the targets. They are the ones that everyone is going after. And they aren't having quite as much fun as they used to because they've already climbed to the top of the mountain and they're feeling the pressure. And champion after champion after champion talk about it. You know who talked about it last year and didn't play their best for most of last season and felt that weight? The Kansas City Chiefs. And it gets even bigger when it's year three. The AFC is deep as hell. When we talk about the best quarterbacks in the league, we talk about Lamar, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, C.J. Stroud. I could throw in, you know, the Steelers are frisky, the Jaguars, who knows? Someone is going to pick this team off, and it is because of history, is because of human nature. It has nothing to do with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Their greatness is assured, but they are not going back to the Super Bowl. Okay. Uh, Mr. Weich. Uh, well, I, I'm going to counter that first off to say the human nature hasn't changed. Is, in the history of humanity. In the history of humanity is absolutely insane because <laughs> the folks who believe in Adam and Eve believe they wore fig leaf. Now they wear Tom Ford. Mm. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to dispute that because last year what they had Kansas City had Chiefs have to do for the first time in Patrick Mahomes playoff history they went on the road, right? They went on the road and they handled business. What was the first time since Patrick Mahomes hasn't been there? This has been a defensive team. Mm -hmm. Okay, they walked it all the way through. They knocked off a team like the Baltimore Ravens, which was winning by an average of 17 points a game. Since you want to throw analytics and numbers in there, and they held them to 10, right? Yes, there are plenty of C.J. Strouds on the come up. There's a lot of teams on the come up. But as we have learned from The Wire and from mm. the new series that Patrick and I were talking about, Supercell. Objection. Nobody has game, watched Supercell. Patrick, Nobody Claybon, even knows what it is. Overruled. When you come, Thank people. you. Thank you, Your Honor. When you come for the king, you best not miss. And Patrick Mahomes makes a miss. And they've got more talent on offense than they had last year as well. Okay, I know we, I know we have time limits here. But we do. If I could just retort. Yes, sure. Just a little please. bit. Look, they had to win on the road. That, that's helping prove my point. Like, so many things have to come together to get back to that point. Stefan Diggs had to drop a deep pass in a game that they very uh, well could have lost in Buffalo. So many different things have to happen in a single elimination tournament. I think that's a good example of why it's going to get tougher and tougher and tougher. And at some point, their luck runs out. I find it interesting that my esteemed colleague to my right um, says that it's very difficult to repeat in mm -hmm. terms of history, mm -hmm. but then uses the past as evidence for that. Mm -hmm. I don't think the past is proper evidence for the future when the 2024 Chiefs will play in 2024. Mm. It doesn't have anything to do with what a Dallas team did in the 90s or what the Patriots didn't do in the 2000s. Um, the fact that it's going to be difficult to win a Super Bowl doesn't change, but to say that the Chiefs won't do it, I don't see the improvement in the rest of the AFC that can't be applied to the Kansas City. How many Super Bowls have there Objection, ever, objection, there your honor. Been? Objection, your honor. He is trying to lead and persuade the jury without proper protocol. Sustained. Thank you. I think the Chiefs are a good football team. <laughs> Judge <Cole. laughs> Okay. How many Super Bowls do we have? We've never had a, a three-time champion. Never once happened. There's a reason for that. Your, well, honor, your honor, he buried the lead. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> he did. He did. Okay, well... Um, thank you, counsel, mm -hmm. for these arguments. I'm going to take a quick break to go over the evidence here and consider the arguments, and I will return with a decision. All right, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for their patience. I'm really glad we didn't talk about this ahead of time. Um, <laughs> these arguments have been meticulously laid out. Mm -hmm. um, Greg arguing about past precedent. Um, History is made all the time in the league. Every week, history is made. Records are broken. That's why we love this game. Mm. But I do think that it is difficult for the Chiefs to get back to where they were these past two years. Because of the departures that they've had, Legereus Sneed, that's going mm. to be a big one for Spags and the defense. The defense was the unit that ended up holding up this team and getting them to the promised land. The thin receiver situation that always seems to be an issue ever since Tyreek Hill left, but never really has been an issue at all. And now they've drafted and who knows what happens with Rishi Rice. That's all. That's an omnipresent 
thing that's going to be following them all season long. It doesn't, I don't even take that into account anymore because they've proved everyone wrong over and over again. However, I do think that they have a lot of competition in the AFC. Mm. And because it's so difficult to do something like this three times in a row, everything has to go right. The stars absolutely have to align with injuries, with schedule, with team chemistry, with all of it happening at once and everything going right for them. It just seems more likely than not that they will not reach the Super Bowl Mm. for a third straight year. That is how the court rules in favor of Mr. Rosenthal. Let's go. Thank you, Mr. Brady, for funding this trial Uh, with dark money. (laughs) Patrick, we're not. No one's taking away uh, your your record. We we have to file an appeal. The burden of proof now is more doubtful, more likely than not. I I trust I trust this court, um, (laughs) and I say that because it it has nothing to do with the fact that there's still cases to try. (laughs) I I trust. Next case on the docket, Zach Wilson versus the people of Denver. (laughs) All right. Order, order. Thank you, everyone, for coming back here today um, in this gorgeous courtroom. It's uh, been outfitted in green colors, and we love that. Um, But that has nothing to do with what we are about to talk about, other than the fact that this player did come from a, a team that wore green. Yes, Your Honor, and I would like to start this off since we're talking about colors that he left there feeling blue, but things are about to change yellow. Mm. Right? Oh. Things are about to be more sunny. And I'm going to argue the fact that Zach Wilson will emerge as the Denver Broncos starter and possibly under Sean Payton wow. have a Geno Smith, Baker Mayfield type of resurgence. And I say this because, one, his competition is rookie Bo Nix and veteran Jared Stidham. And people are saying, oh, okay, Jared Stidham has got – the edge when it comes to a veteran thing because he knows the system. But Jared Stidham has not had to endure what Zach Wilson has had to endure, right? He's getting a new fresh start. He's going out to the mountain air where he's from. He's from Utah, so he's from near here in Colorado. He's going out to a fresh air. But here is why he is going to end up as the starter and have a resurgence under Sean Payton. And it doesn't have as much to do with Zach Wilson as it does with Sean Payton. First off, the first five games – at Seattle, at Pittsburgh, at Tampa, at the Gents, the Nathaniel Hackett game, and the Raiders. Those are five very stout defenses. Do you want to throw Bo Nix into that situation? No. But here's the bigger deal. Sean Payton has to win. No, not that he's going to lose his job, but soon we're going to start talking about him the way we talked about Bill Belichick. Mm. Was it Brady or Belichick? Mm. Oh, was it Brees or was it Payton? Because Sean Payton has not won without Drew Brees. And that is why he's going to give Zach Wilson the opportunity. Zach Wilson, who had the best camp, according to some observers there, of all the quarterbacks. He's going to give him the opportunity to get through that gauntlet and stake his case to be the next Geno Smith and earn a contract elsewhere post-2024. Your Honor, I am finished with that argument. Mm, Okay. Uh, Let's do a counter here. That's a very, very strong Mm. argument. Yeah, Your Honor, um, I'd like to... Good luck approach the court and present some evidence <laughs> for you. You may proceed. Um, I'd like to provide you tape of uh, Zach Wilson's first start in the NFL against the Panthers. I would like to present you tape of Zach Wilson's second start in the NFL against the Patriots. I would like you to continue and present every single start that he's had in the entire NFL because at no point in that time has he ever looked like a winning quarterback. He hasn't been a winning quarterback, and I hear you that Sean Payton's ego uh, might be so large that he would want to be the guy who fixes Zach Wilson. Mr. Rosenthal, uh, let me step in here. I'm not sure the court has this much time to watch all of the tape that you are suggesting. Okay, because I kind of wanted to throw in the Geno Smith uh, Jets tape too, because that was actually pretty good. And, you know, there there was a sign there that he was going to be good. But if you don't have time for that, I just want to present the fact that he brought up fresh mountain air as like one of the top reasons why Zach Wilson could win this thing. Can I redirect your honor? Oh, no, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Claybon, your turn to make your argument. Well, my my argument is very similar uh, to Mr. Rosenthal's. I I would also like to present uh, Tim. Boyles, 
uh, opportunities to play for the 2023 New York Jets and say that it's a similar situation. I, I realize that people feel that the island uh, and its adjacent uh, locales have this sort of ethereal ability to make things pressure and more hard as if football is somehow different there because people eat pizza, I guess, with certain water. I don't know, <laughs> nor care. Um, I just look at the actual material that's put out on the field. And I feel that Trevor Simeon and Tim Boyle might have had a case over Zach Wilson last year. And I don't know that Trevor Simeon or Tim Boyle, uh, maybe Trev could come back to, to Mile High. I, I'm just I'm not sold yet, Steve. Okay, to, 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 re- to redirect your counsel? honor. Okay, so are you, uh, the, the counsel has argued that, especially Patrick, that Tim Boyle <laughs> and Trevor Simeon p- could have put better evidence on tape. Where's Jettis Didham and, and Bo Nix's tape? Mm. Right. Where is their tape to argue against Zach Wilson? It was good enough for Sean Payton to draft him 12th overall. Again, breaking protocol may object your honor. Sustained. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what sustained means. I don't know if you think this correctly. <laughs> I know, at least it wasn't overruled. So <laughs> thank you very much, your honor. That's all I know. <laughs> I see it in TV shows all the time. I have no idea. <laughs> I am not arguing that the Denver Broncos are going to be a playoff team. <laughs> I am arguing that Zach Wilson is going to show enough on said tape to put himself in position to get through these first five games, which is a gauntlet for the Broncos, help Sean Payton be more creative to win ball games, or at least be competitive in ball games, and for Zach Wilson come after the 2024 season to be in a situation where he is better and more desired mm. than Jimmy Garoppolo wow. and players of such ilk. Wow. Just okay. um, before we move on for this, just for the court, I do want to put it on the record that Jarrett Stidham is far more likely to have this little come up that Steve Weish uh, is mentioning than any Zach Wilson. But it's going to be Bo Nix. Uh, counsel, this has nothing to do with the... Uh, <laughs> I mean, if it's Jarrett we're, Stidham... We're throwing it's, that out. It's the not, throwing it's not that Zach out. Wilson. Look at the money. This is one okay. of the most insane arguments I've ever heard. <laughs> well, the court really is just going to keep this simple and quick. We don't need much time to come up with a decision here. My mind has already been made up. I think that Mr. Weich put together a fabulous argument. Uh, The schedule being such a gauntlet with those first five games, but more so that Sean Payton needs this for his legacy. And at this point in time, He's going to get the absolute best out of Zach Wilson wow. if it kills him. And I think, if anything, the fact that Steve Weich is arguing that Zach Wilson can become the next Geno Smith to Greg Rosenthal right now <laughs> is such beautiful poetry <laughs> that I cannot rule against it. So I'm ruling in favor of Steve Weich. This is an outrage, Your Honor. Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Take Let's ride. Away. Let's ride. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank two, you. two great decisions by our esteemed <laughs> judge today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Patrick Claybon. <laughs> Are you next, sir? I believe so. The bail- bailiff? The court will now hear the case of rookie QBs versus the bench. Representing the plaintiff is Patrick Claybon, and representing the defendant is the bench. Ooh. <laughs> Got it. And a shout out to the bench. I appreciate all the support over the years. I would like to say that there has been a lot of conversation about J.J. McCarthy and what he should do. And a lot of that harkens to the other quarterback on the roster in Sam Darnold, who was the youngest quarterback uh, to start in the NFL by a few months um, in a very long time. If J.J. McCarthy starts, he'll be the youngest since Sam Darnold. And people say that he shouldn't because it will ruin him, because it will make him bad and he'll be sad and he won't be good at football anymore. And they'll point to any number of quarterbacks, including one that we just discussed in, in Zach Wilson and say, well, if you come out and you have a bad performance, then you, you ultimately will lose confidence and you won't be good. I am making the case that if somebody is not good at football, it is not because they played football. I would like to say that <laughs> to play football and play football well, playing football is a part of that. And you would have robbed so many great quarterback seasons. We would have sat there and know nothing about C.J. Stroud. And the Texans would have been an absolute complete mystery. We would have missed out on one of the... Greg's Super Bowls. We would have missed out on so many spectacular seasons because, oh, we can't play the rookie because they're mentally weak. Stop projecting your own insecurity and inability to handle failure on professional athletes. I think good football players are good at football. That is my case. That's amazing. Okay. Um, The court would like to hear uh, the counter argument. 
I got to admit, Your Honor, uh, you're looking great today, by the way. Um, <laughs> thought I'd throw that out there. I've, I've been a... Counsel, that's inappropriate. A lawyer for <laughs> years, just stating the facts. Um, was part of the mock law crew at Minnetonka Regional High School in 1996, 97, president of Model Congress. It was a little different. Um, I've never heard such a convincing argument here. I have a hard time being on the side of the Sam Darnold hive and um, just human nature and the projecting. He he got me there. Again? I agree with him. So y- I'm with Patrick Laybon. Are there any counter arguments here? Why are we in court? I will make a counter argument, <laughs> even though that was a freaking great <laughs> argument. Um, if we're going to enter evidence on human nature again, uh-huh. um, your honor, I really hope next time you take counsel into chambers <laughs> and tell him to expand his mm. uh, vocabulary. Mm-hmm. The human nature mm-hmm. argument is a little played. It is. It is. Um, but again, well done. Thank you, counsel. Appreciate I will say this in, in defense of Sam Darnold, possibly getting there, nothing against J.J. McCarthy, but the one thing his head coach, Kevin O'Connell, showed during the Josh Dobbs era, during the Jaron Hall era of last season, is he can get guys ready, right? This is a talented quarterback who he knows something about from his coaching colleague, Kyle Shanahan, last year. Very talented player. Coming in with a good offensive line, things that J.J. McCarthy would have, the best wide receiver in the game, player that J.J. McCarthy would have, but then there is experience. That is the only thing Sam Darnold is really wielding right here, is the experience and a head coach who can get him ready. Other than that, I will rest. I believe that rookies should play when they're ready. We don't know if J.J. McCarthy is ready, so he he has to go out there and prove it. He, he was... Good in college. He was solid. They, he hasn't seen the, the pass rush coming at him. If Drake May is ready to play, he should play. But there are circumstances where they're just not good enough soon enough, and maybe that will be the case. That's that human nature. That oh. that, that's human nature. It is. <laughs> how would you? How could you know when a rookie is ready to play if they've never played? How would a rookie know this information? Could Because I've been in football my whole life. I'm a coach. I'm watching them each and every day. And then they play in the preseason with the live pass rush coming at them. You put them in as many circumstances and the joint practices as you can, and you make an evaluation. That's what you do. It also depends on your ownership. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. If your ownership says, play the guy, play him. Mm. Right. And as much as I appreciate how counsel has put, the, put forth that argument, if the coach is telling me, right, that somebody is, is not ready, then they need to be telling me that they're not good. If, you, if you're talking about mm-hmm. mental, your job is to coach football. Your job is X's and O's and gaps and responsibilities and all that. You are, you are not a shrink. Like, this, is not your, this is not your capacity. If they are good enough at football, if J.J. McCarthy is in practice showing he has the ability that Sam Darnold doesn't, then he should absolutely play, and we shouldn't try to protect him from failure. It's football. It's sports. Like You're going to miss shots, but, but how do you respond? A quick, That's what we got. A quick sidebar to that. Yes. And I think this goes into the whole essence of the quarterback whisperer. There's a whole lot of quarterback mumblers out there, too, who are hiding behind that. <laughs> because if it is their job to develop quarterbacks, mm. and we've seen some who are mm. supposed to have that, who have mm. not made it happen, Kevin O'Connell's not one of those guys. He's a no. quarterback whisperer. He is clearly we've, the we've guy. We've seen it with the Adam Gases of the world. Mm. We've seen it. It's a tale as old as time. Yes. So the court has made a decision here. Um, again, this feels very clear cut, so I don't want to waste anyone's time, but especially my own. <laughs> the court is ruling in favor of counsel Clay Bond. Ooh, well done. Because the sheer argument of stop projecting your own insecurities <laughs> onto athletes was so beautifully done. And it just... It, it was a gorgeous way to put it because that's what we see so much. And these coaches, they cannot change the mental makeup of these players. They can try. They can they can do everything in their power to set them up for success, but they cannot change their actual abilities. And that is, I think, something that is very important to take into consideration here. So J.J. McCarthy will be set up well. Um, as you outlined, Mr. Mm. Weich, but I am ruling in favor of Mr. Claybon here. Yeah, well, play him. I love it. Thank well you. Done. Thank you. And and Greg, uh, Mr. Rosenthal, kind of helped out in that decision by deferring to you immediately and oh. crumbling um, with no counter argument. 
So yeah, as, as you guys know, I've had a, a lot of legal troubles in my life, despite my career as a lawyer. And I'm hiring Patrick next time. <laughs> <laughs> he seems great. Strange development. Well, to lead, to lead an argument versus the bench is absolutely <laughs> a key. That was the hook. I was done right there. Well, Has yeah. anyone as a sidebar been in court any time, like, recently? Oh, yeah. I, I, I won a case. I had charges dropped last year. What? Yeah. Really? It, it was great. It was a red light camera. I stopped at the red light, and the... They came in. They came and talked to everybody. Wasn't that one in Culver City near work? Uh, no, this because I got this was um, this was over on Venice Boulevard. Uh, either way, um, <laughs> but yeah, they came in. They're like, "Hey, everybody here for a red light? Your cases are all dismissed." No way. And so, every including the people that blew through the red light, I was the only person that actually didn't run it. So everybody got their cases dismissed. Wow. So we did Ooh. it. One and zero. Oh. I love it. You're fighting the good well, fight. Well, two and zero oh if we count today. Yeah, exactly. I was on a jury. We awarded we awarded somebody a whole lot of money. Really, a whole lot of money. I had jury duty uh, over July 4th, and that was basically just me calling to see if I needed to come in and mm. then saying no <laughs> all week long, and then I completed my jury duty. So hey, I'm amazing. Years. That is the dream. Years. I am supposed uh -huh. to be in jury duty right now. but Really? We're trying to launch a show here, <laughs> uh, and uh, I put it off till November. We'll see if that's any better. But, Steve, I know you need to leave this courtroom <laughs> Jeff right, now. We've, we've, Steve right we've now. We've totally broken... <laughs> Broken the fourth wall. I've got to go. I'm being paged. This is now a running bit. <laughs> I've got, I've got Steve going to NFL Insiders in a big time interview with a Hall of Famer that you can check out. It's going to be Dwight Freeney and Steve. Thank you, Steve. Steve, yeah, Steve. you're the best. Everybody wants to be working with Steve right now. We are going to take a quick break <laughs> and come back with a little more. A little news happened while we were oh, wow. in the really? courtroom. Yeah. Colleen Wolf has just broken a tackle. <laughs> Spun so out of dramatic. the arms of a safety. <laughs> She's in the open field. That's it. The Raiders aren't going to catch her. Uh, we're back on NFL Daily. <laughs> that was fun. I want to do that again. Yep, it's coming back. It, I have, coming I back. have I've, ideas. I have ideas. I've, I've, I had some arguments that were really going to blow people's mind. Um, but we're going to wrap up the show with a little bit of news that happened Prove while it. we were in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. Caleb Williams, the number one overall pick of the Chicago Bears, uh, officially signed his rookie contract. This was like a thing because people noticed that the rookies are reporting this week. It was just about to happen. He might have missed a day of the rookies reporting. I don't care about the, the rookies <laughs> signing. It never matters. Roma Dunze also signed. There was a hey. little bit more drama to this because Caleb Williams does not have an agent. He had, you know, a lawyer working on it for him. But uh, nothing is getting in the way of Caleb Williams being on that first episode of Hard Knocks, carrying his bag in for the rookies reporting. And oh. I frankly am excited. No agent to take a cut of this fully guaranteed deal mm. is pretty amazing That's, for him. Yes. Um, and then also for the Bears, now they'll have essentially three years with him on a rookie deal to evaluate if he, I mean, if he ends up being what everyone thinks that he can be, they can build around him on that rookie deal and, and bring in pay other players. And, and I nice. love that we've come a long way in the conversation about players and their representation uh because i feel like a few years ago it was like well you know oh lamar doesn't have lamar anything. was like the first big name yeah, to do that and it's like oh well, what's gonna happen like teams are, how are they gonna contact him on the phone and oh my god <laughs> two mvps later <laughs> now caleb williams goes one overall and it's it's kind of an afterthought like i didn't yeah. even know because caleb had said well somebody else is you know uh, is handling he that. said his lawyers and his attorney <laughs> whereas technically the nflpa says he does not have an agent he's representing yeah. himself but obviously he has someone helping with the the paperwork. So you got to give a little fee there, Connie. Sure. You but don't have to give up. No, no. 5%. Yeah. 3%. Not, not three to 5% in perpetuity uh, in, in a oh. game that you don't get to play forever, you know? So, and it's locked in anyways, who knows if he'll get one for next time. But that's a great point you make uh, Colleen about the three years. It's one of the reasons why teams want to have first round quarterbacks mm -hmm. because it's not just a four year contract. Uh, it's really a five-year contract with that fifth-year option if you're a first-round pick. And so you can give Caleb Williams life-changing money, not that this isn't life-changing money, but even more life-changing money next time around after just three years and save a little bit on the back end like like they do when you do a 
contract like two years early. And so mm-hmm. that'll be the plan. I have no doubts about this kid. I, I'm always like, I'm always waiting at the end of the first round to see what teams are going to trade in to take a quarterback just to be in that situation. Mm. That, Love that. That, those extra, that extra little bit of control. Yeah. And it also gives you leeway as, as the decision maker where a lot of these GMs and, and people in the front office, their job is to keep their job. Mm. Right? Yeah. Those so. teams that are like positioned even at like the top of the second, like that's just, it's so good for them. They're in such a great position every year at the draft. So I am really looking forward on a show later this week. I'm going to draft quarterbacks just for this season only with the Daniel Jeremiah. So I'm curious if I'm the one who ends up with Caleb Williams or if he's the one that ends up with Caleb Williams because I got to say he's fairly high on my board. After seeing what Stroud and Herbert and some of these rookies do, it's like rookies can be great quarterbacks too. And there is just nothing I've seen out of this kid that would lead me to believe he is not going to come out of the gate swinging and, and be like an, at least an above average starter. It's just about 2024. We're going to okay, draft just it for one season. just this season. Okay. Okay. But even just this season, wouldn't you take him over? Let's get frisky. Aaron Rodgers. I would. I mean, now, now that I know that to a tug of I love like uh, team Ooh. independent. I, I wouldn't take him over to it. Now that I know that Zach Wilson is going to revolutionize <laughs> things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jared Goff. I'm, I'm just this saying is a fun exercise. I like that. I still would take him because I know it's a rookie, yeah. so it's a huge risk, and I wouldn't put May quite that high. But he's Caleb Williams is different. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Our after dinner men today, Colleen, we've just kind of been wrapping up the show with something that just gives a leaves a nice taste in the mouth. And, okay. and uh we had mentioned to the listeners we have an email address out there. It's uh NFL Daily Podcast at gmail.com. Everyone lock it in your phones right now. Which, by the way, I just want to say too, real quick that I got so many messages, tweets, direct messages on Instagram, on X, all over the place from listeners from ATN. And it was really overwhelming um, because all of the messages were so nice. And I, I got to a point where I was like in such an emotional place that I couldn't even like read them. All, I, I was but very much there. I just want to say that how much I appreciate all every single person who sent me a message and said something so nice and thoughtful and if I didn't read it yet I will eventually read it but it's it's just like it's hard for me to do it Mm -hmm. because it's sad and I don't like sad things um but I don't want you to think that I'm ignoring you or don't have time or the care to respond to you because it's the exact opposite. I have big feelings like Mm -hmm. my dog has big feelings. And whenever I come home, Dasher has to grab a toy to put in his mouth to parade around because like he has such big feelings and I am basically Dasher. Mm. So I just want to say how much I appreciate the listeners because they've always been the absolute nicest and sweetest and most respectful um, out of any show I've ever done. So thank you. Man, double everything. Colleen. Man, it is good to have Colleen back I'm in back. the studio. I'm back. Uh, I'm back to we've been through a lot. And it's, emotions. <laughs> it's been emotions. It's been an off season. <laughs> it has been. He, and it, it's, it's <sighs> been a lot, but everything Colleen said, I, I echo too. And I, I get it, like from the listener's perspective, that it's a lot. It's a lot. It's it's a lot for us uh, too, believe me. And and everything you said is, um, I live I live that too. And I I now is not the time for me to see everything. Although I I see the nice stuff, and we have seen a, a lot of really nice emails. Um, let let's throw up actually uh, the tweet first, uh, Randy, if you can. Uh, this was from Tom Mar- Tom Marshall. I recognize a uh, longtime listener. He said, "With the Around the NFL podcast t- tattooed." On my eardrums, I've tried hard not to like the NFL <laughs> Daily Podcast, but my ears don't lie. I really like it. Good luck, Greg. And Aww, uh, Tom. You know, got got a lot of messages um, kind of like that where it's it's mixed feelings. Uh, let's go to another email. This one is from Sid. This is more just like factual uh, question. Uh, do you have any plans for fantasy football-related content on the new pod? Nothing crazy like a whole episode. I do think a segment <laughs> here or there wouldn't be a bad idea. Wishing you all well. Excited to see where it goes from here. I mean, why not in the whole yeah, episode? I mean, that's not crazy, Sid. Yeah. That's why dismiss it? But I'm glad you mentioned that. We are going to do some fantasy, throw some segments in, yeah. maybe a little more regularly next week. Uh, we're definitely going to have a, a fantasy segment. Heck, maybe the whole show. Look, I don't know. The sky is the limit. We can do whatever we want. Ceiling's the roof. All right. Last uh, <laughs> email. We'll, we'll go from uh, Rainier and uh, 
He says he's a longtime ATN and JRVP listener. Wow. Oh. Shout out to the Justin Lick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. A lifer. I like it. JRVP. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back too, by the way, in October. That uh, Anthony right now is in Asia. Never emailed before to any podcast. Wanted to reach out and say love in the new show and will be a daily listener and downloader on Spotify and loves the release schedule. We've heard a lot about that. We're, we're trying to keep it consistent, keep it daily. Also interested in an informative show. They'll give me the news, make me a little smarter. Love the music as well. Although I, I, I'm wish with you, Colleen. I think we we can do well, tweaks. We can do yeah. Tweaks. Maybe Rainer. I have notes. I have a lot of notes here. Rainer occasionally like creeps through a crowded like warehouse of bad guys with a crossbow because that's what one of <laughs> that's what one of the tracks sounds like. <laughs> 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 you're not wrong you're not wrong this and is, this is why i needed you here like, colleen listen, i need you here guys, and now you're here i we're gonna have to fix some of this music <laughs> i'm not gonna lie and if any of the listeners have anything that they would like to submit um i will just throw that out there because you know i think that there's some really creative people that listen to the show we've heard it in the past some of those examples so <laughs> that, is, that is absolutely and true also for those of you who are saying that, you know, you've been so used to ATN and you uh, like our, our first listener. Who was that? It wasn't Tom uh, who said that he didn't want to like NFL yeah, Daily. He wanted to hate it. Uh, he wanted to hate it. Um, just want to let you know that like, look, flowers, they don't compete with each other. They all bloom and shine together. Mm. So different isn't necessarily a bad thing and there can be many things that you like at once yeah if, if your if your timeline to enjoy things is very limited and you only have an right. hour a day I, I guess that's the case but i don't know how many people that applies to right, right. i am now at the point where <laughs> i don't do anything without listening to a podcast while i'm doing it. like if in one thousand percent so i got room for a lot of podcasts mm -hmm. i'm putting them at 1.5 speed for the most part yeah. i gotta admit now and uh yeah i gotta catch myself sometimes because i'll be you know like flossing walker's messed up braces teeth and i you know i got zach low in my ear or whatever i'm not really paying attention to the to the beautiful child in front of me so sometimes it's too that much podcast. unnecessary straight. too maybe, much podcast. maybe that's too much information to share well it, <laughs> never too much it felt it felt you know for for those of us who came from the braces community it's, yeah it's a struggle and it was weird it was weird because you know by the age of nine like your kid's on your own you're not yeah brushing your your kid's teeth uh, you haven't for years uh but then the braces are back and they, they need a little bit of help uh i needed a little bit of help getting through this show so connie you did it patrick you did it uh, I'm really excited about that quarterback show that we are going to be putting up on Thursday. So that is tomorrow. And so you can look forward to that. The quarterback ranking show with me and Daniel Jeremiah. Patrick's actually sneaking into that one. Ooh. I can't be stopped. Just for I a little, love it. I don't a little leave. news at the I don't want to leave because I might not get back in. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm, I can't believe I'm still here. <laughs> Until Thursday. See you next time. <laughs>